thermo cosplay. I always yep. want to say thermal, but it's thermo. Well, that, it's thermo on purpose because I use a lot of heat related materials, so thermal makes sense too. And <laughs> hence why I was going to ask, how did you create that name? Yeah, I, I live in Arizona, which is hot. Um, my first costume I made used thermoplastics, and now I use a lot of thermo related heat related activated material so uh, makes sense. Cool play. <laughs> that, makes, that makes sense yeah uh so how did you discover cosplay to begin with um so i actually started as a comic book artist at phoenix comic-con and i was selling comic books and i sold out in the first two days which shocked me because it was my very first comic book i did not expect to sell out in two days um nice. <laughs> and so i um what I did then was I uh, I was like, okay, I see all these people dressing up. Like, what is this? And my sister introduced me to, you know, cosplay. And then I heard about Kamui cosplay and the rest is history. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kamui cosplay offers a lot of uh, tutorials and everything like that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so what was your first official cosplay? My first official cosplay was actually a Diablo D, uh, Diablo 3 demon hunter oh. um and i think uh actually i i'll yeah but i i have photos of it on my page i basically i really liked diablo 3 i never got a chance to play it but i was so enamored with their artwork okay so i uh, decided you know what i'm i'm gonna do a demon hunter as my first costume because i'm crazy so <laughs> yeah i think i think every cosplayer is a little crazy you know yeah you know we're taking a thing that was back in 2000 something for professionals to do for movie pre premieres to to a convention where everybody dresses up and has a lot of fun. Yep. You know, it's awesome. So you're cosplaying today as Chung Lee from Street Fighter, right? Yes. Yes, I am. That's what I was and, and I made sure to dress up my mannequin because she was sort of naked. Mm. So. <laughs> yeah, the, the mannequins, you know, they have to be clothed. I, I yeah i had a this couple is a children's of, show of you know no, yeah i was like this joking. is family friendly <laughs> but maybe a naked mannequin just in case i turn and you know lose. no yeah it's it's fine <laughs> so are you working on uh current cosplays right now since uh, yeah. the pandemic so this is going to be tamatoa from moana okay and um as you can see that is those are individual gold coins on mesh okay um so that gold coin skirt is five pounds and then the overskirt is glitter spandex, which is also two and a half pounds. So by the time I finish adding all of the elements, the bodysuit, the armor, the backpack, I think it's going to be like a 15, 20 pound costume. Wow. And it's mostly fabric. <laughs> so uh, have you ever been in a cosplay contest? Oh, yes. I usually, other than, you know, uh, Corona cancellation, um, but I usually compete two to three times a year. Um, I have won novice intermediate master level awards and i have even placed at large um events through instructables too i've won two awards wow. through there as well nice so uh speaking of pandemic what have you been doing to like survive the the lack of conventions the lack of uh photo shoots or anything um so basically I actually have my own stream called Cause Talk Live, and we basically bring in just cosplayers from all over the world, and we, you know, have them talk about a certain subject that they enjoy, or we interview them. Typically, it's more us focusing on let's teach others about elements that they can do while they're stuck at home, maybe wanting to craft. Yeah. Um, so I do that, and then I actually keep entering online contests and like right now i'm part of the cosbond creator contest and that is why i'm working on tamatoa because i'm using cosbond i've used the reinforcer and their attach build in that skirt already and after this interview you're going to be on a virtual con right yes yeah. yep <laughs> asoc kingdom i just um i keep busy because I like technology, like it's a part of kind of, I don't know where my other ribbon went, oh, there it is. Um, it's kind of what I do day to day. I'm a cybersecurity analyst, so technology is uh, easy for me. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, like, how do you make time to do all of this? Because you know, uh, for, I don't for me, sleep. I work at a prison <laughs> all day long, and then I come home and I play on my computer, but I'm like, dude, even that is like hard to do. 
Um, I've been told, like, I feel like I've kind of slowed down this year, but I've still been told that I'm not slow. I feel like I am. <laughs> hey, if it pays yeah. off, it's it's good. If it makes you happy and, and it brings, you know, other people in excitement, then hey, why not? Yeah. So, so do you prefer sewing, armor making, or wig working, would you say? So I made this wig, but I freaking hate it. Um, I hate wig working. I, I can do it. I hate it. <laughs> it's just obnoxious because I, I, most of like, I, I can't, you can, I have it hidden, but this side of my head is actually completely shaved because I don't like hair that much. <laughs> so working with fake hair is even worse. Um, but when it comes to armor making and sewing, I like both of them equally. I feel like I'm probably a little bit stronger with armor making, which is why I'm pushing myself to do more sewing in this Tomatoa build. Um, like he has armor, but I'm actually going to be covering, covering the armor and in spandex instead of painting it so that I can actually wash the envelopes and smart. and not have stinky armor. <laughs> yeah, that's smart. But yeah, I like using, um, I like armor and I like sewing equally. Um, wig styling I can do, but I do it poor. Okay. So is there a co character that you cosplay more frequently? There are two of them that I cosplay a lot. Um, I do Merida from Brave a lot. Because mm -hmm. um, I want to, you know, I like to emulate her accent and um, talk to little kids about finding my mom and my brothers. Oh, nice. um, <laughs> and then I love being Grandmaster Indui Gast from uh, Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> okay. <Nice. laughs> it's the most random thing, but Grandmaster is uh, sassy and fun. So... Okay. Why not? I mean, yeah. he's crazy, and I just love walking around and like looking at superheroes and be like, "You want a job?" <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice. So, only it's not a job; it's slavery. But you know, yeah, this is slavery. <laughs> um, so, do you prefer to do photo shoots at conventions, or do you like to go on specific locations, or are you more of a green screen cosplayer? Um, so I've only recently started doing some green screen stuff and I feel like that's really difficult. Um, as somebody who's done photo composite, I know how much work it takes. And honestly, I prefer just going on site, like taking the half hour, one hour drive somewhere that emulates what I need rather than spending five hours trying to get a perfect composite background. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> Um, but I, I, I like doing conventions or sorry, I like doing photo shoots at conventions. It's just, it's very difficult to get really good photos because you constantly get un interrupted by people. Yeah. Um, and it's fun because then you get to show them like the, the, you know, behind the scenes of what cosplayers have to do to, to share photos, but also they won't stop harassing your photographer who's just trying to get the right lighting or right pose. And mm -hmm. there are times where I've hit a good pose and I'm not going to move because I know this is a good pose. But then I'm like shaking after the five second or 30 second or even five minute conversation going, please, someone just snap the shot. <laughs> right. Right. So I'd say probably my favorite would be on site, just going out somewhere. Um, and even if I have to pay more, it's OK. I'll save up and pay more just to ensure yeah. uh, that there's less interruption. Yeah, exactly. So with cosplay being so popular, it seems that more and more women are cosplaying than men. Is this a female dominated industry? So I actually know just as many male as I know female cosplayers. I might be one of the unusual ones, but I used to do commissions. And when I did commissions, all of my commissions were male, except for the end. I did last, my last two were female, but almost all of my cosplay commissions were for male people, like male cosplayers. And I don't know if that's just because I was the only person doing them. And, and like, I know a lot about menswear. So I was like, oh, this is easy. I can do this. And I like to gender bend a lot. So this, this makes okay. sense. Like, this is easy. Um, but I know just as many males I know female. Now, um, I do know, like, I've traveled a lot in cosplay. And I can tell you, um, if you go to places like uh, Seattle or California, it is definitely female dominate, dominated. There are definitely more female than there are male. Um, Arizona seems to have a pretty good balance. Um, and I wonder if that's just because our charity groups. Like, we have so many charity groups and we have so many just meetup groups in general and communities that... I feel as though the balance is a little bit easier because people are able to bring in their family and friends. Yeah, I think for Arizona, it's more family-friendly cosplay, whereas California or Seattle, you're looking at more adult cosplay. Yeah, um, I mean, and they are they are very, very... I mean, most of them are nice, but there are some that are incredibly pretentious. Yeah. Of, course, of course, and that's 
that's going to happen all around cosplay. It's there's good things about cosplay and there's bad things about cosplay. Um, so with the whole um, cosplayers taking it to the next level in terms of sexualization of characters, what's your stance on that? So if it makes you comfortable, I mean, embrace it. Uh, like what I considered sexual was Katie Ari, the first one, and I was so nervous to wear her. And I mean, you're pretty much covered. There's like a little cleavage, but in general, she's really covered. Yeah, and exactly. so it's 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 one of those things that like if someone feels really confident in it, I have nothing against it. Um, obviously, have warnings on it because that's kind of the society that we live in. Um, um, nudity is still something that people are nervous about, but I, I've grown up as an artist. I've been in life drawing. I've seen so many naked people that at this point, a body's a body. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And exactly. whatever you want to cover that body with, okay. But if you're going to a convention, I do think you should have a certain level of, of tact and consideration for those that are attending as well. Um, even if you just wear like a mesh bodysuit underneath so that you're covered. Yeah, exactly. So... Sorry, I got threw off because one uh, an alert went off, and I'm like, "How did that alert go off?" Okay, that was kind of trippy. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, do you have any favorite cosplayers right at the moment? Oh gosh, um, my list. I have a, a top list. Three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my top three. Okay, so let's see here. Who are my top three? Um, well, uh, I love Tranquil Ashes cosplay. She is amazing. Um, I also really like Light Night Mage, and um, I'm partial to Kamui. So I would say Night Mage, Tranquil Ashes, and uh, Kamui. Nice. The top so, three at the moment. Yeah, top three <laughs> at the moment, and and, and they change fr- from time to time. Depends on which uh, cosplayer puts out the next good cosplay and everything. Um, because of the pandemic, we're not able to go to conventions. We're not able to really meet up and uh, hang out with. Uh, other cosplayers you know even though we're having these outside events uh here in arizona it's still the if factor what if um i go over there and somebody coughs on me (laughs) you know yeah uh it's it's pretty dangerous right now and cases are coming up so what are what are you doing uh to kind of offset that are you going to more virtual cons are you yeah, so I've been doing more virtual conventions, more streaming, um, kind of being a bit more, sharing a bit more of my work in progress. Usually my work in progress was reserved for my patrons, but they're totally cool with me sharing it because they totally understand what's going on right now. So instead I'm doing like more little selfie shots at home for them is like, hey, thanks for letting me share my work in progress. Um, nice. And then uh, when I do, like I did go to an event in August, um, we all wore masks, we all stayed six feet apart, and it was a drive-in convention. So it was Game on Expo, Game Drive-In, and it, pretty much everyone was in a car, except for three people on stage giving a presentation, and we were all separated. Um, and I stood at the front of the stage, and the other two stood at the back so that we would have the distance that was needed. Yeah. Um, and to my knowledge, no one got sick from that event, and that's probably because everyone was in a car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, I think so too, yeah. I think um, They're also for- having another convention to, to, today, I think. Tonight, yeah, I got invited and I was like, no, guys, like, I have so much going on. I can't, I'm going to explode. Um, plus, I looked at the setup. I'm not entirely comfortable with it. Um, yeah. I don't think, um, I don't think it's distanced enough. I don't think the fact that it's free means there's no control over the number of individuals exactly. attending. Um, with the other event, the reason I was comfortable with it is because you had to register, you had to attend. Um, so there was control over occupancy. For this one, when there's no control over occupancy, I really don't feel comfortable doing it. Yeah, I think people are pushing the envelope too far. You know, and I think people are desperate. Scared. I don't blame them. Like, <clears throat> there are a lot of people who have been home alone. Yeah, you know exactly. <clears throat> and when you're home alone, it's just like you know, depression, anxiety, all those fun things creeping in, and uh, you want to get out and escape. But yeah. you have to do it safely, unfortunately. So, do you have a cosplay horror story of something that went horribly wrong and you just, like, regret the day? Yeah. Um, I think it was Phoenix Comic Con 2016. I was competing as Yuri and Kay from Dirty Pair Flash, which is okay. kind of a retro anime. Um, and I was Yuri and my my sister was Kay. And um, so... <laughs> Uh, I had made my own custom boot covers, first time doing it out of this crazy pleather material, okay. well, kind of pleather. I later found out it was a 
like almost a plastic material because it got to 113 degrees that day. And I was walking across the pavement when they used to have like all these food stalls. And all of a sudden, I swear, I was like, I feel something on my foot. And I looked down and the plastic had literally melted. Wow. <laughs> it was slowly trying to melt on my skin. And I'm like, oh, my God. And so like we ran to the nearest hotel. I got that one shoe off. I was in a restaurant. And they're like, it's cool. We've seen weird stuff. It's fine. I'm like, OK, yeah. sorry. Um, and I'm looking at it. And I'm like, do we still have that white duct tape? And my sister's like, well, we might, but I know the repair room has more if we run out. And I'm like, okay. So we went to a repair room and we duct taped the whole inside of both shoes to reinforce them. And then I still, and I had to compete that night. And I still managed to compete. Wow. And the very next day I ripped off those boot covers and was like, goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. They're gone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I literally almost, I was, it was to the point it was melting so much that I almost lost the sole of my shoe and nearly wow. stepped on like, who knows how hot pavement. <laughs> no exactly that's the the benefits of uh arizona yay <laughs> you get to learn how yeah. to how to wear your cosplay in 120 degree weather yeah yeah it's it's tricky yeah so is there a favorite cosplay that you've done i have a lot of favorites but i i think the one that like i treasure the most even though i had to retire it because i need to kind of remake it um when i first made it i was still learning now i know much better techniques and i i'm I would like to improve it, but I would say it would be Thane Krios from Mass Effect 2. So I did a Thane Krios cosplay. I have this little piece of hair that's tickling me. Um, I had this Thane, Thane Krios cosplay. Been there and um, it was amazing. Uh, I did it. I, I wore it for the first time to Gammon Expo 2017, and then I competed in it at Tucson Comic Con 2017, I think. And I won Masters, and I was like, what? Nice. So, but it, it, the thing with it is it's just very tricky to wear. That's why I need to remake it using better techniques. Makes sense. So is there a funny cosplay story that you've had? <laughs> it's actually from this year before all the shutdowns happened. So Kikori Con was the last event I attended before <laughs> shelter in place orders occurred. Um, and uh, it's a very small event in Flagstaff. And uh, someone ran by looked at me, ran away again. And I'm like, what is going on? They kept running by me and they snuck like the, the, the second or third pass, they handed me a one and then like snuck it into, I was wearing a chest plate and I was very vocal about these are not my boobs. Like I had like this yeah. fake chest plate on. And yeah. so like they snuck it in between the armor and my chest plate giggled and ran away. And I'm standing there and I'm Yojimbo from Final Fantasy X trying to figure out what's going on. And I realized they're trying to summon me. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh i'm like yes. i'm like i'm expensive a dollar's not gonna summon you yeah, right <laughs> yeah it's like... have you met me <laughs> like i need like one million here <laughs> i need a million minimum no yeah, yeah so the, a million gill um but like it made me laugh so hard and it also made me feel really good because it realized like people were recognizing what the character was even though it was you know like turned him female and I was using Sunset Dragon and a combination of original concept art. And I was just like, oh, well, nice. you know what? <laughs> this works. <laughs> nice. So uh, have, have you ever been mistaken as a character? Uh, a character? Yeah. Anytime. In, actually, pretty much every time I wear my blue Twi'lek from Star Wars, everyone mm -hmm. thinks I'm Diva Plava Laguna from Fifth Element. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Everyone always thinks that. And I'm like, I'm... I'm not diva. I have two head tentacles, and she has like dozens. She has dozens. one big one, and then a bunch of little baby ones. Right, exactly. So, but um, now with Star Wars becoming more prevalent, and even with the Mandalorian having come out, I yeah. feel like Twi'leks yeah. are going to be a bit easier to recognize. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, that's something we're going to miss out this year is that we didn't get to see all of the Mandalorian cosplays and everybody coming out with everything. I know, so I'm actually working on, uh, so the armor from the Mandalorian, I'm taking Merida and the armor and meshing them into one. So it's oh, going to be nice. Mandalorian Merida, yeah. yeah. Mandalorian Merida, nice. That'll be fun. Yeah, so that's, that's another thing about cosplay is it's branching out to where people are doing these mashups, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and... For you, do you believe that cosplay should be like authentic or should you have your own twist on it? 
I think whatever makes you comfortable. So as somebody who is not a normal size, I'm almost 5'10". Uh, I'm not busty, but I have really like like curvy hips. So that just means that there's a lot of characters that I want to do that do not fit my body type. So I have to put my own twist on it to make it work. Um, so I think that that's fine. Um, I feel like if you're going to be competing and you're using that character as your resource, orig originality kind of needs to be thrown out the window unless it's just for fit and comfortable, making it comfortable. Yeah. Um, because competing, you really have to be as authentic as possible if you're using that character as your reference. Yeah, that's true. So what are your go-to stores for cosplay materials? So my favorite one right now is the Cosplay Pros in Happy Valley, Arizona. Um, I think where they're off Happy Valley Road or in Happy Valley. Both, maybe. I don't know. Um, but they, I order them online, and it's just the cosplaypros.com. So I really love them. Um, they offer a whole variety of things, but their foam is amazing. Uh, I also really like cosplaysupplies.com. Um, I've been sponsored by them a couple times before. I got to use their Warbla Cobra Cast art before it became popular. Um, and it, it's amazing. I mean, I, I've loved experimenting with all of the products they have and they're global and they have fabric and foam and thermoplastic and prosthetics. It's incredible. But um, another thing that people don't always talk about is with cosplay, we wear contacts a lot. Um, I'm pretty blind, so I have to get really high prescription and Pinky Paradise really is the only one that always carries my prescriptions. So I love them. Nice. So have you, uh, you, well, you mentioned before that you cosplayed with your sister? Yeah, so she's my adopted sister um, and best friend. Um, and then I also cosplay with my younger brother, my mom, my sister-in-law. Uh, basically, if you're willing to wear a costume and let me make it for you, I will put you in it. Nice. <laughs> so, That's yeah. pretty nice. So how many cosplays, like, off the head have you done like off me your, personally off your head. yeah you personally just just me personally are you in the 2030 range 65. or 65 so how many years have you been doing this then? <laughs> six years <laughs> six years hey that's good though it's it it shows your dedication to the cosplay right? yeah <laughs> the cosplay community I mean, I obviously didn't make all of them. I probably made half of those. Um, yeah. So half were purchased and half were bought. Yeah. Have you ever lost something at a convention, like a cosplay piece? Yeah, I've lost, like, buttons and laces and ribbons. And I lost, like, little details on... Um, before I got used to sealing um, Warbla, I lost a couple little details that just popped off. And I was like, no! <laughs> you see it rolling away, you know you're never going to catch it. <laughs> So, what's the biggest convention that you've been to? Ooh, um, it's kind of a toss-up, and it really depends on the year. Um, there was one year where um, Phoenix Comic Con, and the last year it was Comic Con. It had the inflated of like one hundred and ten thousand because they gave away a lot of passes on Thursday to try and encourage people to attend the rest of the weekend. Um, but the, uh, so it would either be the that year for Comic Con, Phoenix Comic Con, or it would be probably. Emerald City Comic Con or LA Comic Con because their attendance fluctuates, but it's usually in like the 80s and 90s. Yeah. K, like 80, 90,000. Okay. <laughs> so that's, I'd that's... say it probably, yeah, because like even D23 wasn't very big. Um, It's pretty exclusive. So I'm thinking Emerald City Comic Con, LA Comic Con, or Phoenix Comic Con are, are kind of in the larger. Yeah. Speaking of LA Comic Con, they're actually hosting their con this year. So they, um, I think, I thought I just saw something come out that they had to cancel because the city didn't approve it. Yeah, but I, was gonna, I was going to say, um, yeah. yeah, I don't think they're going to get away with that. You no, know, I write for a magazine and I just got a notification. I swear I got a notification. Um, I see LA Comic Con. Let's see if it's canceled. That's like the best thing to guess. Is it canceled? Um, so it is canceled and it was moved to September 2021. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was just announced yeah, four craziness. days ago. It's craziness. It's like yeah. people are trying to push their, their opening. And I'm like, guys, you're not going to get that approved. I you And know. I get it. Like, I really miss interacting with people. But sometimes taking a year to slow down isn't painful. It gives you a chance to reevaluate your organization, yeah. to quiz your, your attendees, ask them what they really enjoy, do a full rework of your enterprise. And then the next year, you'll have it down pat. Why not? Yeah. 
Exactly. I think they're going to be a, a, you know, I think the the smaller cons are probably not going to survive. Uh, but then, a few of them might just because I've seen a lot of like kickstarters and fundraisers for like save this con. Okay. So well, a few good. might, I think. Yeah, the I think it's more of an insurance grab, really, because if you if you say that you're hosting a con, uh, like a convention, and you pay the actors and everything to be there and everything, and they the city cancels, then they get to get that money reimbursed and everything and get the insurance claim and everything like that. It's, yeah, and I don't like. I feel like expensive. every company should have some kind of disaster solution insurance or some kind of what I call like an emergency fund. And it surprises me how few organizations establish that it's like business one oh one, you yeah, know, like exactly. <laughs> so have you ever purchased anything at a convention for your costumes? I usually purchase accessories. Like I get like sunglasses or bracelets or rings because I'm not very fond of making jewelry. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, but I would say, uh, do I, I'd say like, as far as bought something that was like wearable, I did buy like a jacket one time for Sombra from Overwatch because there were times where I was like, her jacket was all pleather and I would get really hot. And so I'm like, okay, I can take this off and just put like the little hoodie over right. and still be Sombra and then switch it out. <laughs> right. Yeah. So do you prefer to cosplay solo or are you more of a group cosplayer? I really enjoy group cosplay. I mean, I've done solo before, but the problem with that is, it, one, buddy system is so much easier in cosplay because they're just, even simple costumes, sometimes you just need help. And having someone with you is, is great. Um, plus, even if the person isn't wearing the same costume or in the same genre as me, the fact that we get to geek out together about different things and that say, hey, someone really likes anime, they want to take a photo of my friend, I can carry their bags for them while they're taking the photo and then we can trade off. Like, yeah. I feel like at least two people minimum is required um, when you go to a convention in cosplay, even if the other person isn't wearing cosplay, but I prefer doing like small groups or pairs. Nice. But I've done a lot of big groups. <laughs> yeah. The largest group I did was nine people. Wow. And you managed to keep them all together, huh? All the evolutions. <laughs> wow, that's cool. So if you had a chance to meet your all-time favorite cosplayer, who would it be and what would you say? So I, I have met her. Uh, okay. I've met Yaya Han several times. I uh, met her at LA, and then I actually had her on my stream a couple weeks ago, oh, wow. surprisingly. She joined. We're like, oh, my gosh. We, like, freaked out. But basically, <laughs> it was it was simply, like, thank you for being awesome, you've made my life easier because especially her, like she took something that was so, um, for so many years, you know, like the world's fair was when the first kind of cosplay came out. It was more costume con. Right. Um, and she took something that was so niche and helped her and a few others helped kind of bring it into the limelight and yeah. make it easier for other people to pursue. Yeah. Because that's the whole point you want to share, like, most geeks, most of us want to share our love of whatever it is we enjoy. Exactly. You know, whereas uh, cosplay back in the early 2000s was, oh, you're a dork if you go to conventions and dress up. And now, if you look at it, you're the dork if you don't dress up. Why are you here? <laughs> And that's the thing, too. I've had people say, do I have to dress up when I go to Comic-Con? I'm like, you know, you don't have to, but think about it. When will you get to have fun and enjoy? Right. Like, when will you get to be Superman or Batman? Or when will you get to be, like, Soldier 76? Or, like, I mean, when do you get to do any of this stuff in yeah. your day-to-day? -day? Yeah, exactly. You're you're only going to have Halloween if uh, if you're actually just, you know, one of those. I know, and I was never big on Halloween. That's the thing. Like, I enjoyed it, but I was never, like, most cosplayers are obsessed with Halloween. And this is the one month where, like, most of my content's just work in progress because I'm, like, I'm not big on like scary stuff i i i don't like scary stuff <laughs> yeah no yeah it's uh i saw a meme one time where it was a cosplayer uh cosplayer at conventions and they're all decked out and their cosplay is amazing and then cosplayer on halloween they're in a onesie you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's so true <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah i i could see that because you know a, a professional cosplayer which brings me up to the next question is um what makes a cosplayer professional 
I personally think someone who earns a living wage, um, because if you're, if it's, it's, if it's your profession, like the professional profession, that's kind of where that the root of the word is, is to become yeah. your career, your day to day. If you make a living wage, then you're professional. If you're, if you're a commissioner who, who does stuff on the side or someone who still has to work a day job, I feel like you can be considered like a master cosplayer, but I feel like professional just kind of puts more pressure on people. And it would just be like, you know, professionals reserved for individuals who do this day to day. This is their living wage career. And then the others can still be, you know, um, uh, like still have businesses, small businesses and stuff. Yeah. But uh, if you have to supplement it, then why put the pressure of pro on you? Just say you're still a hobbyist until you want to assume that particular identity. Yeah. So, you know, because you got cosplayers who are like, you know, Jessica Negri, who basically this is her life. You know, yeah. and uh, and you have uh, cosplayers like Amber Skies cosplays, who we interviewed uh, last week weekend, mm -hmm. uh, where she's a teacher, and yeah. you know, and also in and yourself, you're uh, yeah. you, you work you work and you cosplay as well. Mm -hmm. uh, professional, really, to a lot of people is you know anybody who makes their own cosplay. Is but I feel like cosplay. it's I'm really like, easy yeah. to learn to sew. <laughs> Yeah, it's what? really, I don't know. I sold my hand, and so I, I don't think it's easy to learn, but. <laughs> I, I I learned from this. Yeah. Encyclopedia of sewing. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's uh, once you get it down and you, you've mastered everything, then, yeah, you can make beautiful works of art with your cosplay and everything. But, um, yeah. So what do you feel about those cosplayers that push it, to the next level and open only fans and do lewd cosplay and everything like that. So I actually have a lot of close friends that are lewd cosplayers. And for them, it's the reason they do it is because it makes them feel better about themselves. It gives them confidence boost. And I mean, if they've got it, flaunt it and they're comfortable flaunting it. And they're not worried about people approaching them in public and saying, Hey, isn't this you? They're like, yeah, it's me. I mean, you have to be prepared for a certain level of um, anybody like, yeah. I, I get judged because I wear fake boobs because I just I I just I have a bigger butt than boobs. I'm sorry, like like That's it, how it is, folks. <laughs> and how so the things like I feel like you're you're there's people say, well, it's all fake. I'm like, well, isn't cosplay fake? Because we're not yeah. real. I'm not really Chun Li. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm not Asian. <clears throat> I'm some, not. As, I'm not like drawn to the the dimensions of chung Li, you know right and it's one of those things like this is, this is costume play so yeah. play can be interpreted many different ways yeah uh little sparks cosplay uh she's also an arizona cosplayer here uh -huh. um she she, so she, she was hilarious when she was in a panel one time i went to a panel and she's like if we actually dressed like the artist rendition of a character you would have to be an alien you yep. would be like seven feet tall, like uh, 90 pounds. <laughs> Your arms are going to be like length to the floor. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, no, and it's just, it's, <clears throat> yeah, it's impossible. So you just kind of emulate something. So that's why I think it's weird when people try to, like, it's essentially a form of gatekeeping. And I'm like, no, 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 no. <clears throat> like, this is all about, this is all about sharing creativity. Yeah. And if creativity is modeling in semi-nude clothing. Hey, so it is, you know, exactly. And, and so there's a lot of cosplayers out there that, you know, like to see the body positivity and uh, of cosplay And Arizona, especially has an amazing cosplay community where they like to say, Hey, everybody's a cosplayer. It doesn't matter how tall, short, fat, skinny, old, young you are, you're going to be a cosplayer. As long as you're rocking that cosplay, you're good. Yeah, I'm older. Like anytime anyone finds out my age, they just look at me and they're like, "No." I'm like, "Yeah." No. <laughs> yeah. You're like, "Yep." No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> when I tell people I'm 39, people are like, "Oh, right, okay." Yeah, yeah, I'm 34. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's uh, it's always fun when you get into cosplay and stuff. But you've of course been in this for uh, six years now. You said. Yeah. Yeah. So you started in your late 20s, and um. Yep. Whereas, like, a lot of people are getting into it when they're, like, 16, 17. And... Which would have been amazing if I'd known. <laughs> yeah. One one thing that I've seen, yeah, 
it would be amazing if it was popular back then. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Arizona kind of got hit with the cosplay bug a little bit late. Yeah, exactly. Um, but one thing that is disturbing to a lot of cosplayers, including myself as well, is that people like to sexualize characters that should not be sexualized. If they're underage, please. <laughs> please stop sexualizing them. You know, no. like, you know, SAO characters or, or, you know, My Hero Academia. Like, you don't need to do a sexy Todoroki. No, I... I... <clears throat> I feel like if they're underage, it's definitely something you really need to be cautious about. And and I understand that there's still, again, this is a kind of a, an American cultural thing because different yeah, societies see exactly. it differently. Um, but it is it does make me a bit uncomfortable. Same thing when like someone takes Doug the dog from up and makes it sexy. I'm like, he's a dog. He's like, <laughs> what are you doing? No, uh, and also another thing that we have to look out for are the kids who like to dress risque. And I'm like, okay, you're 14 years old. You well, really that, shouldn't be dressing up like this. That's one thing that um, <clears throat> Arizona cons differ at. So I've been like in LA and, and Emerald City. Like they don't really care how old you are. You got a ticket, you come in, you do and wear whatever you want. Yeah. Um, obviously they avoid like if you have to check your ID, if you go into like an adult only area. Yeah. Um, but uh, Arizona, if you look underage, you will get approached by security guards and they will ask you to cover up. I've seen it happen. That's good. At least something's happening with. And I think like, it's. I mean, we, I had like an eleven-year-old girl that was wearing a really tiny tube top and like a bikini bottom and running around. Oh, it was. It was like an older anime. It was almost like I think it was from. Oh, I can't remember, but it's from an older anime, and I'm just like. Yeah. I mean, You're like what? No, I don't know how no, to feel because, like, no. I also don't know like the cultural or religious beliefs of that person. But it, to me, I'm like. Yeah. No, no. It, it's it's true. Like, yeah, hey, hey, stop dressing like a hoe. You're 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 little. Once you're it's, eighteen, it's, go ahead and do whatever you want. <laughs> I, and I and I, for me, it's more. Um, I've had family members who have suffered and friends who have suffered from predators, and 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 having a child on display in a large event like that really concerns me for their safety. That's what yeah, it is. Because That's why I'm uncomfortable. Unfortunately, we're going to have predators at conventions. You know, there are a lot of predators who you know go to conventions and it's oh i know i've been felt up way too many times yeah and that's why we've had uh campaigns where like cosplay does not equal consent and you know and hopefully society will will dive into these campaigns and go oh yeah okay let's not do that let's not feel up cosplayers let's not approach them and say hey can i take a picture and then approach them sexually in that picture yeah you know, hopefully we as a society can grow. However, well, if, you know, it's, if it's, it's, it's like something. Are you familiar with Seven Deadly Sins? Yes. So Meliodas is always touching Elizabeth's boobs, right? If someone is a Meliodas and they come up to me and they're like, may I please have this photo? Okay. Okay, cool. I know. Well, because they ask. You're asking me. <laughs> yeah. And I've had that happen before where like, because again, Elizabeth is like really big. So like yeah. I wore these ridiculous, stupid drag queen boobs because it was funny. Nice. <laughs> and like this Meliodas cosplayer, we were just taking photos and the whole crowd's like, touch her boobs, touch her boobs. I was like, they're not real. Even if you touch them, I can't feel it. If you feel comfortable and you want to get a photo, it's totally fine. And the girl who was uh, gender bending, she's like, okay. And so. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> yeah, those, uh, I-, I have to say for cosplayers who like, you know, Use prosthetics or something. They're getting re- very realistic nowadays. Oh, mine are silicone, and you can't tell the difference if I don't want you to. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, whoa. They're expensive, even, and they're even really guns difficult. are getting realistic. Yeah, no, but you have to take really good care of them. Like, people are like, well, that's cheating. I'm like, no, it's not, because you don't understand the maintenance, how you have to assemble them, how you have to wear them, what mm-hmm. you have to do after the end of the day. Like, it's, it's like, they, they'll last 15 years and they're about 200 300 dollars yeah but they'll last as long as you take really good care of them yeah exactly well you know that's good that you know for people who are not well endowed you know uh they can be well endowed yeah. And, yeah and it's it's great because some characters you know they're well endowed so you have to match up with the character and also i like to be able to take it off at the end of the day because yeah, right. I like, have i'm doing I have an F 
F cup for like a couple of different cosplays that are like just the characters themselves. You're like, how this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> right. But when I take them off, I'm like, how do women with boobs this big live? Because like I take them off and immediately my back feels better. And I'm like, yeah. whoa. <laughs> like, whoa, that's a difference. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. No, exactly. So uh do you prefer to only make your cosplays now or have you purchased some in the past and so for me um if it's a character where i know basically i'm gonna have to commission commission the living crap out of it just because my body type is not normal i will make it myself just because uh, if i really love that character and i know it's difficult it i'm making it i just don't really trust people enough for how some of my ideas are and i know what i request is kind of tedious but if it's something that's like anything from a really popular video game or anime where you can just buy dozens of costumes, yeah. I'll buy them. And I usually go a size up so that I can, because I have larger, my shoulders and my hips match, which is not normal for a woman. And so usually your shoulders are a bit smaller, but my shoulders and my hips are the same exact circumference. And that's t difficult for me because I'm not busty. So yeah. I always go big and then I can tailor it in. Um, and I'd rather be like, okay, you know, I'll just buy this costume because then all I have to do is tailor Nice. So it depends on timing and difficulty. So what's your ultimate dream cosplay right now? Ooh, okay. Like no budget worried. Yeah, no budget worries. <laughs> uh, there is this old anime called Bubblegum Crisis. Uh, and there were these night sabers that basically it's like Iron Man suits, but of the 80s. And okay. they were amazing. And I would love to make a fully functioning night saber suit. Yeah, I think... Uh... Right now we're we're looking at uh this website that makes full body armors uh and there's an Iron Man suit for ten thousand dollars that oh. lights up sound voice changer opens up when you like you know want to show that your face let you out of it too and, and then there's a button you push on your hand where you can actually step out of it like st uh, Ted Stark does. Oh. Yeah. Uh, see, I want to do that, but probably with 3D printing and yeah. maybe more with, like, an app on my phone. <laughs> yeah, like an app on your phone. You're like, bloop. And it's like, this. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's it's really well done. And I'm like, wow, $10,000. That's yeah. the my, my little brother did a a Fallout X01 armor from, I think it was Fallout 4, uh, the X01 armor there. And he, he has, like, all these, like, little pulleys and stuff. And now he's, mm -hmm. like future goal now that he's got a 3d printer is to make one of those ones that he has like a pneumatic um release nice so no, there, there's so many things that you could do with cosplay and that's the joy of cosplay is there's always somewhere where you can take it to the next level mm -hmm. you know yeah. uh it's like with uh this one cosplayer i can't remember her name off the top of my head but she went to a convention and she had smoke come out of her cosplay for Air the competition, cosplay? no, it was a uh, Shrey, Shrey. Okay, okay. Uh, Shri, Shrey Sh or whatever. Uh, I know and, who you're talking about, like S H R E I. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. She was a, a, um, she was a cosplay finalist for TwitchCon or or some mm -hmm. or. I'm pretty sure it's TwitchCon. Twitch, or is it yeah. Blizzard, Blizzard Twitch? One of them. Yeah, and she was uh she was a uh, yeah it was TwitchCon and she was a finalist in there and. It was amazing. Like, whoa, how did you do that? Yeah. You know, that that's the great thing about it. You, you show off your cosplays. That's why a lot of cosplayers are going crazy because they can't sh really show off their cosplay at conventions. And, uh, and you can't interact with friends or groups and yeah. like-minded people. Yeah. Exactly. And you, you could have, you know, virtual conventions like you're doing yeah. yourself. And it, it, it lacks the same, you know, thrill, though. And the interaction too, like you can, you, there's still a limitation um, without paying oodles of money. There's still a limitation to what we can do with technology, um, especially with how simple you have to keep it for others. Um, if you're not yeah. well versed in it, you have to keep it really simple. Yeah, exactly. So if there could be anything that you could tell your past self about cosplay, what would it be? Uh, plan ahead and budget more. <laughs> Um, I, I use the cause planner app and I've been using it consistently since its debut. Um, I actually have spoken through email with its creator a few times. Nice. Uh, he was, he's awesome. Um, at least it, it, I mean, he used to end it in he, 
I'm assuming. I'm sorry. Um, but uh, the thing is, is uh, budgets all <laughs> budget creep is a real thing. Yeah, it's a real thing. No, it's it's true. <laughs> It's kind of like when you buy a house, you have to budget in extra things. It's the same thing with oh, a house yeah. play. Because you never yeah. know if you're going to screw up on a part of the material. Nope. Nope. Yeah. And, and Or if it's something you can't, like, the great thing about thermoplastics is you can reuse them pretty well. Same thing with, like, the foam clays and stuff. But yeah. um, fabric, you cut it wrong once. And you might be able to use it for, like, a smaller piece or some detail work, but you got to go buy enough fabric to do the larger piece of whatever it is. Cause I've messed up before I've cut up the wrong side yeah. and I'm like, great, this is lining and there's no way for me to reverse this. So, yeah. So is there, um, is there something inside of you that wants to like work out and get skinny and be like one of those, you know, popular cosplayers that are like skinny and everything like that? Or do you feel, Hey, you know what? This is me. I so I'm I've had um body issues most of my life. I used to be about 105 pounds overweight. Um, now I'm just kind of in the 20-ish over range because I um, pandemic. Uh, but I uh, I do want to go back to work. I actually have started working out again, but I'm not necessarily trying to do it for be, to be thin. Yeah, I'm doing just it to healthy. Get healthy. Yeah, yeah, because my family, like family and and other health concerns, that's more my focus. Um, if yeah. I get thin in the process, cool. Hey, bonus. But, you kind of have to embrace your own body. Everyone's body is different. Um, and the fact that everyone's trying to sit to an ideal that most people can't achieve without corsets or padding is just, it's scary. I yeah. mean, I've seen people hurt themselves to flatten their chest. And I've seen people hurt themselves um, adding so much weight to their hips for something, not realizing it was pulling on their lower back, and then they couldn't move for a week. So. Wow. I would rather just embrace who you are, understand that you're not going to look exactly like that character unless by some miracle you were just born that way. Yeah, uh, exactly. And there will always be people more popular than you, <clears throat> so you need to figure out what your special skill is. Yep, exactly. It doesn't matter how you look. It's what you do. <laughs> it's what you like, do. I have been sponsored many times. I'm not in the tens of thousands of fans, um, but I've been sponsored many times, and I've had – more opportunities than some really famous cosplayers I know. And they ask me, what do you do? And I'm like, I talk to people. Yeah. That's my thing. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. And we, we've touched on this, whereas like in your opinion, what makes a cosplayer a pro cosplayer? I think anybody who's out there doing it is, is a professional. It's like, you're doing it. You're going out there, you're doing virtual cons, you're, you're making your cosplays, you're making connections, you know, in a lot of, a lot of people's eyes, you are the professional, you know? Yeah, and I can see that too. Like again, it's a matter of, per of per perception. Like me, I just feel like an artist and a hobbyist, but that's also yep. because I haven't, I don't consider it a job. Um, when I do um, sell things at booths, all of my proceeds go to charity. I never take nice. funds back. Nice. So um, I feel more like I just am doing this for my benefit. So I don't yeah. think it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, in your opinion, what's the favorite? Um, like your favorite part about cosplay? Um, I would say the networking. The fact that I get to learn about different cultures, different um, genres, uh, see different experiences. The fact that I can meet people from all age groups and have something we can connect on because, hey, we're at a convention. I'm dressed up. Or, hey, you're following my page. If you're following my page, it's for a reason. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, I've talked to people. I've talked to a 90-year-old woman that did this like adorable wonder woman. And I've talked to elderly people who were only focused on Renaissance fair and didn't realize they could do more. And yeah. so it's, it's just making that networking connection. And then you never know who you're going to meet. Like I, I that's how I got like the Warbless sponsorships and the cosplay supplies and the cosplay pros. I just accidentally meet people and they reach out to me. Yeah. That's one thing I'm hoping will come back very soon is the Renaissance festival. Oh, I missed Please. that. I, I got a free pass too, and I was like, I didn't even get to go. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, we had we had a few tickets too, and we were like, well, we're not going. Crap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. research is is crazy out there. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah. I, I'm always an optimist, and and I I know scientists who have been doing a lot of work on things, and yeah. I know I know that if if we just dig deep we could probably start opening slowly by March. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, as long as everybody's on board of 
hey, when you're outside, wear your mask. Yeah. You know, like a lot of people are like, I'm outside, I can have no mask. And then they go inside the store and they'll put it on, but they'll put it over uh, on their mouth only and not over their nose. And I'm like, guys, if you just follow the directions, just (laughs) easily do it. I saw a cop and a guy arguing back and forth how the cop said she didn't have to wear her mask outside. And I'm like, dude, what the hell? You know, and it's, that's it's, the only mandate is you you don't have to wear your mask outside if you're exercising, if you're walking or doing yeah. some kind of strenuous activity, then then that's fine as long as you're keeping distancing. I, I, but I, honestly, just, I think it's at this point where we should just tape everybody's mask on them and say that's what you live them, with. Yeah. That's what yeah. you live with right now. Give yeah. it two weeks. <laughs> Do and, not breathe and, out any air for two weeks, and then we're good. <laughs> you know, I, I, but you can't do that. You can't do that with people. You have to give them their freedoms and everything. And it's just like, yeah, people interpret things as well, yeah. man, just, just follow the directives, man. <laughs> and then even, even with that, it's, it's hard, but hopefully, like you said, you, we have to be optimistic. We have to believe in science and we have to believe that they're going to come up with a cure for this, or at least a vaccine to help us not be able to deal with this. And we'll be able to move on. Heck, if you go out the side of the door outside and go, <clears throat> people are like whoo, <laughs> and, and I'm like, dude, it's allergies. It's, I'm fine, <laughs> you yep. know. And oh, people yeah. are like, I don't believe you. I don't believe. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's hard because you don't know what's allergies and not. You know, look at China how they wear a mask. If they're not feeling well, they put on a mask. It's common courtesy. It's common sense common courtesy and everything like that but uh thank you for coming on to the show i appreciate all the time that you've uh given in the cosplay community um you know your cosplays are amazing and i wish you luck in in future endeavors with it and uh, and you know anything you want to tell your fans before we go uh aesop kingdom Check it out. It's at one to five. And then you all better be wearing your masks like we're saying, because I want to see you at a con. And if you die on me and I can't say hello to you again, I'll die and then haunt you. Does that <laughs> exactly. work? Exactly. That's <laughs> Can what I reverse doing. that someone? Right. <laughs> just like, just, we'll just haunt grave. people. I'll drop all the swag on your grave and be like, look what you don't get to use. So <laughs> wear a mask because exactly. I miss you and I want to see you again. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you again for taking the time and uh, see you later. All right. Thank you. See you later. Have a good day. You too.